Welcome back to the Capato Architect Corner. Today we're going to be showing how to deploy metadata in minutes and then back promote almost instantly using Capato. Welcome back to the Capato Architect Corner. Today we're getting hands on. And what we're going to walk through is using some of the Capato Playground environments, which in another video I'll show you how to set up. I'm going to show you how you can make quickly make a metadata change in one sandbox, promote it through the pipeline, and then actually back promote it all in a matter of minutes. We're going to show you how easy it is using the Capato product. So first, we're going to start from the Capato uh, Academy, and we're going to be here under Training and My Playgrounds, and I've set up a training environment. We'll go over in another video the setting up, but it is really cool because you're going to get command and control to a powerful uh, a Capato simulated org, and then using scratch orgs to simulate the pipeline. Let's go take a look and see what this looks like. So I'm gonna open up the primary org. This is the command and control org where Capato is installed. And here I've come into my main Capato org. This is the what we'll call the governance org. And through the setup, which we'll show in another video, I have a really cool little pipeline. I got a dev, a dev one, I've got a dev two, I've got an integration dev where I can bring my work product together. I can go through a UAT and then I can go to production and I even have a hotfix which allows me to go from here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a metadata change, let's say a custom field on the account object. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna quickly jump into dev one. So you would be a developer and you would know in your that you're working in your dev one environment and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to setup and we're gonna create a custom field on the account object. So let's go to account and let's go to fields. We're gonna create a new custom field and we'll take a checkbox and we're gonna go is Steve test. So this is just a dummy field on in my dev one for the account object. So I've done it. I've actually added it to the page layout and this is ready to go. Now what I'm gonna do, this was made in my dev one box. Now I'm gonna go back to my governance org, which is right here. And what we need to do is we need to create a user story to represent the need to move that metadata. So from here, I can go to user stories I can create a new user story. We'll just call it a user story next. Um, so what I've got is a simple, this is a Steve checkbox, linked it to a test project on my pipeline, and I hit save. So now I have the user story rep which represents me wanting to migrate that field. The only thing I need to do is I need to designate where I've made the change. So I'm gonna click on the build and I'm gonna pick up the credential and for here, I know I've made this change in dev one. So I hit save and now it now knows it's in dev one and I am ready to go pull the commit. So I'm actually in my governance org and I've made this change appropriately in my dev sandbox and I can go hit commit changes and Capato will be able to reach into that org and look for that change. And so it's got a query. So here is 420. What I'm actually gonna do is go back to 345 and I'm gonna search for any changes that I have made in the last 15 minutes. This is a really powerful mechanism. Now you'll see that I have the Steve is test, which we just added, uh, a test test that I added a little earlier. And it's also detected that I, at 418, I changed the page layout. So I had actually changed the layout by adding the custom field. I'm going to choose to only take my, my, the one checkbox field, not to take my any profile modifications, not to take my account layout. So it's already identified other dependencies that I've changed. I'm going to leave those out. I'm going to focus only on the field and I'm going to process my commit. And just like that, I have now taken what was org-driven development and Capato is going to create a branch in my get repo and actually 
check this in into my get repo. So now I have this change checked into get. So here I am on the user story, the Steve checkbox. It's showing me that it's in dev one and it's showing me its journey to production. Um, and what I get to choose is if I want to kick it forward and do a deployment, it is really easy. What I can do is I can go to deliver and just check this promote and deploy. Just check this box. So I'm going to hit save and I am actually moving this forward. That's how easy it is to promote this change. And I can watch this happening in my pipeline. So what I'm looking at right now is my pipeline and I have kicked a change. And so I have started a change from dev one and it's going to be pushing that story forward into int environment. Now, without me doing anything, it deployed after I checked that box, you'll actually see that it's telling me that I'm one back promote behind on dev two. So it's identified that my change has made it to int and it is waiting to be back deployed. So if I went to my user story, now you see that it's moved forward. So this has now been moved forward to, into int. Let's actually take a look at it. So I can come back to here, see all my little sandboxes. I can go into int. We're gonna jump into int and see if that changes there. So we're gonna go to setup, object manager, go to account, fields, and is Steve test has made it. So with just that checkbox promote and deploy, it's made it across the pipeline. In this case, I sent just a single custom field. It could have also pulled its page layouts, other information, all of that was just a single promote and deploy. What we're gonna do is this is telling me that dev to another developer it might need this field. And so it's going to be this easy. I'm gonna click on the one. It's going to identify my user story that needs to be back promoted. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back promote and deploy. And this is going to send this backwards for a back deploy. We're gonna go back to the pipeline. And this one is now going to go and deploy it back to dev two. So that way dev two's developer will have access to that change. So my, it started in dev one, it moved to int, and now we're doing our back deploy so that way our developers can be more in sync. And you'll notice that the screen just changed. You'll see the little spinner right here that's designating that it's in an active deployment. And then we're gonna watch as it's going to deploy this into dev two with a simple click, check, promote, back promote, and deploy. And it's gonna make it. So this is now back promoting into dev two. And now it's complete. And so this has been back deployed and we can go take a look. What we can do is go into dev two hop inside and see if it has made it to my lateral developers environment so they can access it. So we're gonna go here, set up a object manager, account, fields and relationships, and is Steve test has made it there. So to summarize, we can be on the user story which represents the unit of work. We can quickly see that it was started in dev one, it's made it to dev int or int environment. I can then go to my deliver tab and I can see that it was promoted forward and I can see that it was promoted back to dev two. So you get a full history right here and I can go to the build um, and actually take a look at the commits and I can actually see the metadata. So with this, I get a full history of what's happening and in just a matter of clicks, I'm able to deploy and back deploy. So this is a nice pipeline demonstrating how we're moving forward from dev one to dev int and then back deploying back 
and in future videos, we'll do more complicated deployments. But this shows you how with a matter of clicks and a simple Capato user story, we can both promote and back promote. Now let's take a quick look and see what's happening behind the scenes in Get. So here is my Get repo. And behind, we can take a look at our branch and we can see that we have a feature branch 25, which is the one that we created. So this is the feature branch. I can quickly go into my force app main default, account fields, and there's my is Steve test in this source format, singular field. So this is showing you that Capato is, is using get, the Git repo. It is following um, source-driven development and is doing all of our commits for us. And we've got the great Git history. Now you can even incorporate pull requests into your process. It, you can see that it's detecting my pushes, my promotions, and even my back deploys, and I can utilize the GitHub pull requests. So by using Capato, whether you're a pro code developer with your Visual Studio code, or whether you're a low coder that just wants to go in and add the fields, check a few boxes, promote and deploy, and your code can move along, everybody's code flies together through the pipeline, and we have the full Git history, which gives us the, you know, the accuracy of deployments. So really powerful tools. This is the, the very basics, but we're going to start layering on top. Very simple how you can promote moments and you can back promote just as quickly. Join us for uh, Capato, making your deployments fast and furious. Join me again for the Steve Tech, uh, for the Capato Architect Corner and looking forward to making your deployment successful. Have a great day.